Hey guys, Chris here. You join me here in the brand new Volvo XC40 P8 Recharge. Yes, guys, we are finally here in the fully electric version of the XC40. And I have this car for the next five days. And in those days, I'm gonna put this car through a whole bunch of tests. So I'm gonna make a lot of videos on this car. You don't wanna miss out on any of those videos. So I highly recommend you guys to click that subscribe button down below and also smash the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos which will be very useful for a lot of you guys looking to buy an XC40 P8 recharge. But in today's video we are doing a cold weather range efficiency and charging test. We're starting here at Circle K in Fudeset and we're going to Brumendal and then trying to get back again. We're going to see how far we can go on one charge when it is cold outside and it is cold it's minus eight degrees celsius and in Brumendal it should be like minus 14. i actually did this test in my audi e-tron yesterday and the coldest we had was like minus 16 degrees celsius so yeah it's going to be very cold so it will be very interesting to see the consumption and how far this car can go on one charge so we're going to top up to 100 percent here now guys and i will see you guys on the road Okay guys, we have been on the road now for 23 minutes. We're about 40 kilometers outside of Oslo and our consumption now is 34.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So I think that's just a tad higher than we had in my Audi e-tron at the same distance yesterday. But I think it is colder today, it's minus 11 degrees Celsius and we might have a slight you know, headwind. Um, that's why we're doing the test uh, back and forth to average out you know, weather conditions. Um, this infotainment system here is one of my favorite infotainment systems of any cars, this Android Automotive, which is what it's called. Um, but it does have some quirks. I, I love it. I love it. I think it is amazing. Maybe it's my favorite infotainment system, but it has some quirks. So the button cluster here on the steering wheel was obviously made for Volvo Census, which came out, you know, in 2015, I think, with the XC90. Um, which is, you know, this is a new steering wheel for the SMA, CMA platform, but the buttons layout is the same. So now you can see our uh, trip computer, our board computer is gone now. So to actually to, 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 uh, to get it back in the other Volvos with the sensors, you would press this, but that just uh, changes the screen showing there in the middle. Instead, you have to press this, which just isn't intuitive because this, you know, indicates that you're actually pressing something to show. Yeah, that's similar to that screen there. But to close it again, to collapse it, you have to press here. So open and then close, which is not intuitive. You know, every other car just has you pressing the same button uh, again, you know, in Volvos again in the census, you would have that. Uh, pressing this would, you know, bring up the board computer and then pressing it again would, you know, uh, uh, reduce it. So if you do press that one more time, you actually reset the drip computer. So. Uh, that's a bit annoying and also another thing about this car is I, I here you have your radar guided cruise control but yeah it only has radar guided cruise control because you can click right or left to go in between the modes um, this does not have a uh, pilot assist which is Volvo's auto steer which is very strange this is a almost fully decked out press car and then they don't have pilot assist I mean Volvo's uh, pilot assist is one of the best in the business it's really strange they haven't equipped this car with that. We are now alongside the Mirsa, and as you can see guys, look how foggy it is on the Mirsa today. I mean, I haven't seen the Mirsa this foggy in, I don't know, probably never. And look at the outside temperature, guys. It is minus 10 degrees Celsius, so quite a bit colder today than yesterday. Yesterday it was minus uh, six when we were around here. Uh, consumption is now rise to about 35.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers but I did check the wind map and we do have a slight headwind of two meters per second and another awesome thing is look at this guys we have Google Maps here in the infotainment screen and then we have Google Maps here completely completely awesome this is awesome 
Another thing I really like about this car is that it has a uh, readout right there in the navigation system telling you how much battery you will arrive when you get to your destination. And another thing guys, we only charge to 98% state to charge because yeah, we were charging for almost one and a half hour from like 86 to 98. So this car charges really slow above 80% state to charge and especially above 90% state to charge. Um, but yeah, still though, 39% state to charge when we arrive in Brimendal. So we're most definitely not getting back to Circle K and Fudeset. I hope we can make it to Ionity Doll at least because I want to do the charging test there because that has a readout of kilowatts because this car doesn't have a kilowatt readout. So yeah, uh, we're gonna see how cold it gets and I will see you guys in the next update. We are now approaching Hamad and I think this is the coldest point of the trip. Yeah, minus 19 degrees Celsius, guys. That is super, super cold, and our consumption has now rise to 35.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And as per usual, the standardized, you know, maximum speed of all the tests I do is 10% over the speed limit, 10%. So that's why the speedometer is showing a bit more than uh, the speed limit because we're going 10%. And it just cleared up guys, but now it's just super foggy. But yeah, 37% um, state to charge when we get to Brimendal. So I have to go back to Ionity just to try to make this test as fair as possible. Ionity Dal, so we might have to stop somewhere else and just top up a bit. We are now in Brimendal. We have the beautiful Mjöz Torna. I pronounced it really weird in my last video. I said Mjöz Torna. I just misspoke, but Mirsona, the tallest wooden building or structure in the world at 85 meters tall. That is crazy. That's basically a skyscraper here in the flatlands of, uh, you know, Inlana. So we are now at 35% state to charge. <laughs> yeah, so we're not going to make it back to Circle K Fudeset. And this is really cool, guys. I haven't seen this before. Look at this. So when you just cancel the navigation, it will keep the, uh, your last destination, which is Circle K Fudeset, there at the top left. So without you navigating to there, it just tells you, okay, one hour, 23 minutes, uh, 130 kilometers, and you will arrive with 0% state to charge. But also we're gonna do something really cool. I'm just gonna put on my shades here because, yeah, the sun popped out here in Brimendal, which is beautiful. And is this as slippery here as it was yesterday? No, it is not. Yesterday it was super slippery here. Minus 14 degrees here now is three degrees colder than what we had here yesterday. So I'm gonna show you guys this. Hey Google, navigate till Ionity Dal. <laughs> hey Google, navigate till Ionity Dal. <laughs> okay. Hey Google, navigate till Ionity Dal. So Google refuses to find Ionity in a doll. Um, yeah. So we'll try something else. Hey Google. Hey Google. Navigere til Circle K Furuset. Navigere til Circle K Furuset So that's apparently much easier. Um, yeah, we have to find somewhere to charge along the way. So we had to stop here at uh, Oops in Fudeness just to top up a bit because we weren't able to go to Ionity Doll and all the other chargers along the way are in a way quite a detour. And this is the, the least of a detour. I mean, the E6 motorway is just about, uh, you know, right down there. So maybe a few minutes, but it really doesn't matter because we're not doing a timed test. Uh, we're doing, you know, the range challenge that we will calculate at the end, how much we've used compared to, you know, the consumption and also the, uh, the charging speed test. But I'm just going to give you an update now because, you know, we're not doing the charging speed test here because 
we started with the 28% stated charge, so we know we're not getting that maximum speed. Uh, but we are getting uh, 71 kilowatts now at 90 at 33% stated charge. So we are co-getting. This car should get like 95, I think, at this speed. Or no, much more than that. This car should be getting like 33% stated charge. I think this car should be getting like 120, 130 maybe. It should be getting. But let's see, 70 kilowatts of charging speed. Let's see what that converts to in the dashboard in the dashboard no okay Let's try that again here there we go 200 and yeah just about 200 kilometers an hour so we're going to top up here just to i don't know maybe like 40 45 percent and then we will be on our way we are now at ionity doll and yeah so let's see if we can connect here without a problem and uh, minus 10 degrees celsius guys it's it is a bit colder today than yesterday maybe uh, like five four five degrees celsius colder on average so yeah okay 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 so let's try to park so we can actually see the charging screen here because i want to measure the speed okay so before we do that let's do this and let's check the no, so I always do that wrong. Let's see, the trip computer. Okay, so let's check this out. Our consumption has been 35.5 kilowatt hours, guys. That is insane. That is one kilowatt hour more than my e-tron yesterday. And the conditions today have been, I would say even better because we have had more dry surface, though it has been a bit uh, colder. Uh, we have driven uh, about the same distance. We had a just mild detour, not much, but you can see our average speed, 112 kilometers an hour is the same. The time we spent was about the same and the distance was about the same. We arrived here with 13% state of charge. So we're gonna do the calculations at the end of the video just to see how far we could go. But I want to, before we do that, I want to, um, yeah, I want to connect this charger see how fast of a charging speed we can get uh, i think we're too far away guys i think we are too far away sorry we have to just move like there yeah that should do it i think so that should do it okay and let's go ahead and ionity card or my e-tron card guys okay approved and let's go ahead and see if we can connect Okay, so just hold it like, like this for a little bit while well, you can hear the clicking from the charging uh, box here just to make sure we don't have any problems with initializing and handshake. We can feel the cable start to shake now. That is a good sign. Uh, we do have a yellow light there as you can see guys. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but um, yeah, okay, so we're gonna see what kind of charging speed we do get here. This will be very interesting initial charging speed and then we'll check in at uh, After we've been here for you know, maybe 10 20 30 minutes So let's see So at 13% state to charge if the battery is up to temperature we should be getting the maximum speed of 150 kilowatts uh, From this battery pack. This is the exact same uh, battery as in the uh, Polestar 2, though the drivetrain is a bit different because the drivetrain is made in Europe and the Polestar 2 is made in China, but there should be the same specifications. So let's see, can we get more than 100 kilowatts of charging speed? It is like minus 10 or 11 degrees outside now, so it is cold, but okay, 100 kilowatts. Climb, 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 climb. Okay. So the most I've gotten from this battery pack is like 126. That was the Polestar 2 in September, I think, or October, where we had the ambient temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. But yeah, we're not getting that here. We're getting 120, which isn't bad. I mean, considering the outside temperature, 122. Hmm. Very, very, very interesting. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna get more speed than that. Um, 
We can check in at around 30, 40% data charge, just to see what speed we are getting there. But yeah, okay, 124. Okay, so it looks like we're peaking at 134 kilowatts at around 20% stated charge, which is by far the best speed I've gotten out of any CMA platform car. 135, uh, well, it just went down to 134. CMA platform cars, then we're talking about the Volvo XC40 and of course the Polestar 2, which are exactly the same vehicle basically. But yeah, 135 guys, that isn't bad considering the outside temperature is minus nine there, as you can see. Wow, 31% state of charge, 110 kilowatts. Yeah, we are coal getting guys, we should be getting like 120, maybe 125 at this state of charge. So uh, yeah, not, not too bad, but not optimal either. 82 kilowatts at 48% isn't that awesome. Yeah, but we're gonna do a proper test later on um, where we do, you know, my new standardized test from 10 to 80% state of charge, where we also do calculate, you know, the average speed and also the time from 10 to 80%. We're, then we're going to try to heat up the battery as much as possible just to give it, you know, the best fighting chance. The gross battery capacity of this car is 78 kilowatt hours, but the net capacity is 72 and a half kilowatt hours. So if you take that number divided by today's consumption, which is 35.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then you subtract about 5% in heat loss because tests on this car, on motorways, has shown that, yeah, heat loss is quite high, it's about 5%. So then we're at around like 190, 195 uh, kilometers of range under today's conditions. Yeah, that, that isn't too good. That's quite, quite thirsty and quite poor, actually. And is it more thirsty than the Audi e-tron S? Wow, is this the thirstiest EV I have ever tested? Yeah. I think so guys, but we will really find out the answer to that question when I do the Norwegian high speed run later on. Yeah, that will be a very, very interesting test. I'm gonna do it at the beginning of next week when we don't have, you know, these super cold temperatures. So it's more comparable to the runs I've already done on the e-tron 55, the e-tron S, the Jaguar I-Pace, and also the E2008. But I think this will maybe be the thirstiest car we will be testing yeah so guys be sure to subscribe to the channel as i said in the beginning of the video hit that notification bell because i will be making very cool and interesting videos it will be very very interesting to see how this car compares to the likes of the audi e-tron the jaguar I I pace and also the e2008 so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always guys Please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.